Harold, the show Arsenault, who led Weber State to one of the most improbable wins in NCAA tournament history over North Carolina back in 1999. All right, now pleased to welcome in a guy that nobody forgets from the NCAA tournament, uh, especially in 1999, Harold, the show Arsenault. And uh, Harold, how you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. So, all right, take me back. You're a JUCO guy. You had bounced around to a couple JUCOs before arriving at, at Weber State as a junior. You're putting up big, big numbers in the big sky, but outside of the big sky, not a lot of people knew who you were. Uh, you draw Carolina. What were your first thoughts when you draw Carolina, the number three seed? Um, I mean, we sitting there, and we we realized we 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 draw Carolina, and the team was kind of excited. A um, couple of guys I I played junior college ball with. So it was really our opportunity to show what we could do. We've been waiting for it for two years. Um, kind of the fans that were sitting there kind of looked at us like, at least we made the tournament. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, the coaching staff, they just stayed up all night. We stayed up most of the night trying to figure out the best way to attack Carolina. So when, when you're watching film on Carolina, what are you thinking? Uh, when we watched them play, we realized they was big, so we couldn't play a slow game with them. Um, we felt that we, if we, if we, uh, we need the game to be about almost 80, 75 to 80 possessions, and that was going to be our best way of winning if we could get, you know, the game to that number. So, take me through what you remember about that game because you went off. I mean, you went off. You had thirty six. You had twenty in the second half. You were unstoppable against a, a program that had gone to two straight Final Fours. What What's going through your head? What do you remember about that game? Um, you know, like you just said, I was a JUCO guy. A lot of people didn't know about me. Um, my coaches that I actually played at Weber State with, I played for them junior college as two different junior colleges. So they pretty much know about my abilities. Um, Carolina kind of underestimated my abilities. <laughs> um, and I just got a, I, I kind of got a groove. And we were surprised that they wouldn't double. So it kind of, you know, all played out the way that it played out. Who, who did they put on you in that game? Who Did they rotate um, guys? How did they play you? They, you know, Okalaja was defensive player of the year that year. Yeah. So, you know, they pretty much assume that since he was the defensive player of the year that he can guard me one-on-one -on -one with just me and him. And, you know, my coaching staff and my teammates was willing to take that chance of me and him going one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, you were, I think, five of seven from three. You scored every which way. You know, was that something that you started to get the confidence as the game grew that, hey – I could score on the on the national defensive player of the year, or or did you have it coming in and you weren't? I, I, well, I knew I was quicker than him, so once I got some, once I got the outside ball to drop, I, I pretty much know I had him because I, I I was I wanted him to come close. So once I I hit a few shots on him, then he had to come close, and it gave me opportunities to drive around him. So you had a lead; they come back. Right, they cut it. They cut it to one, didn't they, at the end of the game? And yes. you're at the line for a couple key free throws with about 13 seconds left. What's going through your head then? Um, just you know, just sit down, you know, thank my follow through, look at the rim, go through my routine, knock these two down, get a stop, and and we could get out of here with a win. Did you realize when you won that game how that would change your life? I'm not, you know, I was in the moment. I was, you know, I'm a competitor and I was caught in the moment. You know, when we was on the court, they wasn't even Carolina. It was, you know, it was just ball. How did it change your life? It, it, you know, the, you know, my senior year came back. It, I was getting double teamed by Division two schools. You know, every school we play, I was getting double teamed, triple teamed. You know, the, the following year was so funny. We played a, t we played a school. And we winning, and they still double teaming me, <laughs> like it was crazy, like, <laughs> like it was crazy, like. They just like, didn't want to give you your thirty. Didn't exactly, matter. it was just all about me not scoring thirty. Who who gave you the nickname? How did you get the nickname? The show. Um, it was a guy named Carl Arkey when I first got to Weaver State, and you know, I'm I kind of play bigger than what I am. I I I, I got a short neck. Um, 
And when he saw me play, he was just surprised that I could do some of the things I could do. 6'6", 215, 220 when you played. You were big. Yeah. You were still a big dude. I mean, you could you could score from all three levels before we talked about scoring from all three levels. Well, I was one of the first, you know, in my opinion, I was first one of the first tweeners where now, you know, that's that's natural to play at that size, at that position. But, you know, during that time, it wasn't too many tweeners. It wasn't the... Uh, you know, P.J. Tuckers and players like that, that was, you know, 6'6", playing power forward and small forward. And so, you know, that, that was the advantage I had. Before we continue that interview, I have to let you guys know that it's that time of year again. We waited two years for this moment, and it's finally here. March's biggest tournament is back. Gonzaga is getting ready to run the table. Slippers are being fit as we speak. And our partners at DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook, are putting our lit listeners at the center of the action. How? If you bet $4 on an underdog in a select game this week, and that underdog wins, you win $256. That's right, $256. Here's how it works. Download the app now and use the promo code FIELD68 when you sign up. Scroll through the list of select underdogs, bet $4 on them to win, and cash $256 when they do. There's no better way for you to put your college hoops knowledge to use than to put your money where your mouth is with DraftKings Sportsbook. It's safe, it's secure, it's reliable, and you can deposit and withdraw your funds at your convenience. So remember, the code is FIELD68, that's FIELD68, to turn $4 into $256. For a limited time only, must be 21 years or older. Restrictions apply. Go to DraftKings.com for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. How did Carolina react when you guys beat them? Do you remember? No, nah, they was, they was, you know, they, they didn't believe it. They was, they thought it was a dream. And, you know, the, the next game when we played Florida, they kind of underestimated it too, but you know, the coach flawed the coach. Billy Donovan was smart and you know he did what Carolina didn't do. He doubled me and they we they went zone. But you took him to overtime, right? You took yeah, him to we, overtime in that game. You almost had him. We almost had him, but like I said, he was smart. He he, he doubled me and made me made sure I didn't even get a shot, a, a chance to even get catch a rhythm. How did you celebrate? Did you have a chance to celebrate that Carolina game or not really because you got to turn around and play Florida 48 hours later? I mean, to be honest with you, after the game was over with, Coach Baglin, God rest his soul, um, we got back, got some food. He called me up to his room. And, you know, the same night he had me in the room looking at how we could attack Florida. You know, he uh, Florida was a, a much better matchup for me. So um, he was just showing me – uh, it was going to be a different style for me to play. I had to do more picking to get to the player that I wanted to score on. Have you seen some of the Carolina players since that game? Um, I didn't saw a few of them. It, it, it's funny when I see them because it's like uh, it, it, it's like it's almost like they still that shocked that that happened. <laughs> Like who? Who who was shocked? Who have you seen that that, that was shocked? Oh, uh, me and Ed Coda, we be, we became good friends, and um, you know, he tell me the whole story of 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 him giving some of the guys a hard time about that game and what he was telling them to about the tournament from his past experience, the years before that the first round is always the hardest round because you overlook, you know, some schools that you shouldn't overlook. Is it crazy to think that when we talk about the greatest NCAA tournament moments, performances, players, that your name is involved and, and has stuck this long? Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's the it's the it's the best tournament in the world. Is you know, I'm a living proof that you can go from a nobody to a somebody with <laughs> with one game. Um, I'm also you know a living proof that. You know, you can't take small schools likely in the tournament. So it's just a great tournament. It's a great, it's a great setup. And it's, you know, it's probably one of the best tournaments in the world. 
Well, listen, I appreciate you taking time, Harold. I really do. I'm glad you're doing well down there in Atlanta. And uh, glad you can be a part of the series that we're putting together on uh, the, the 68 greatest moments, players, teams, shots. Uh, pretty cool that, that, that you still resonate like this, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. This is a blessing. And, you know, um, just just watching the tournament every year, every year, every year and seeing if it's going to be another Harold Arsenal, that's that's pretty exciting. So it probably will be every, every year. It seems like there's one. Right. At exactly. Least. Exactly.